Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. For today's video, I thought we'd look at whether I can create a manga panel on an old Commodore Amiga from 1992. So let's get the obvious out of the way to start with. Of course I'm not sitting here saying that you should try creating your manga panels on an Amiga. This is just for the sake of it, just to see whether it's possible. There's no real intention to say that yes, you should be using an Amiga to create your layouts because, let's face it, it's going to be so much easier using a modern system. This is purely to see what was possible and to see what kind of issues I ran into on the way. So what exactly is a manga panel? Well first of all, what is manga? Well in case you're not aware, then basically it's a style of Japanese comic book or graphic novel. Um, but the thing is, is that it takes on a slightly different form to maybe some of the more western forms of these comic books insofar as that they're not just aimed at young people or children. They're in fact a medium that is for all ages and all sorts of interest groups and so forth. And what's a panel? Well, a panel is basically what makes up the page. The various different imagery that constitutes a comic book page, essentially. And these can be put into little boxes, or sometimes you have characters that sit, um, you know, above all of the panels that are existing on the page. Essentially, it's just the flow of the page. Manga is something that's really special to me. It's something that I read quite a lot of, and indeed, as you can see here, it's something that I've been reading for quite a few years. Pretty much the very first manga that I ever found was in a bookshop back in Devon, uh, way back in the late 90s, when I found a copy of uh, what was the first volume of Lama One Half here. And of course, obviously, that interest has just basically followed me all throughout my life. Even when I was nothing to do with the retro gaming and computing scene, I was still picking up manga and watching anime and so forth. I just absolutely love this art form. And in fact, actually, really looking forward to my future, I really do want to get back to my illustration and so forth in a more professional capacity. It's something that I always thought I was going to do when I was younger, that when I was growing up, I was going to become an illustrator. And just looking through these many manga books here really underlines what I love so much about it. I think you'll agree that the artwork inside these books is just absolutely phenomenal, and the effort that goes into it is just self-evident. So that's why I'm really passionate about manga. Of course, manga and anime have a somewhat symbiotic relationship, and it often leads to some confusion as to which is which, but put simply, manga is the graphic novel version of the animated features that you'll see on TV, cinema, film, etc. So how am I going to tackle this project? Well, I'm only going to lay out one side of the page, so this is no great undertaking in many respects. What is different though is the fact that I'm actually going to try and put this all together on this old Commodore Amiga of mine. So let's very quickly talk about the system that I'm actually putting this together on the Amiga 1200. This first came out in 1992 and the specification inside of this is nothing too crazy, albeit it would have been a pretty good Amiga to have owned around about 1993-94 time. It's powered by a 68020 processor which was used in the Macintosh until they went to the PowerPC in 1994 and um, it runs at 28 megahertz. So it's roughly the speed of a 386SX, something around those lines, and to something like a Macintosh LC2 would be somewhat comparable to this system. Memory wise, it has 10 megabytes of memory. Now this would have been pretty decent in 1994 and would have cost you quite a bit. Now the Amiga's a little bit strange insofar as it splits the memory into chip RAM and fast RAM. I don't want to get too technical, but essentially, let's just think of chip RAM as the graphics memory, so you can't load a picture bigger than 2 megabytes on this Amiga 1200. So you might think that doesn't sound very much, but actually, because we're going to be working in monochrome, it's not too bad. But it does mean with those 150 GPI images, it could be a bit touch and go. So let's just see what we can do. So the first step is actually to draw the artwork and actually work out how the panel's going to work. So here basically you can see that I have drawn a very basic sketch of roughly sort of the layout of the, the panel as I'm envisaging it in my mind. The next step is basically to hand draw on each of the individual sort of uh, frames that are going to make up the panel in total. So this basically involves cracking out the pencils and the pens. The little story that I'm working on here is basically based on the Lama One Half uh, manga by uh, Rumiko Takahashi and it's based on uh, a particular story arc that appears uh, roughly midway through the manga's run where Lama pretends to be Yoga's little sister, uh, Yoiko, and um, basically the shenanigans that uh, ensue with that. It's a very funny story arc, one that wasn't actually featured in the TV series. 
Once the sketch is completed, it would generally be the done thing to scan these in using a proper scanner. Now, it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody that I don't actually own a decent scanner that will work on the Amiga. So what I'm using instead is an app on my iPhone. Now, my iPhone is about four years old, and my first impression when I heard about uh, an app that would do scanning was, that must be absolutely terrible, and for sure it's never going to work very well on my phone. But I have to say I've been rather surprised. It's been pretty good for doing documents, and I found that actually at a pinch, it is not too bad at actually photographing and turning some of my artwork into decent black and white scans. Once I've acquired the image in my phone, I then basically put it onto my Mac where I downsize the picture. Now, this is a necessary step. I could actually do this part entirely on the Amiga if only I'd actually install Photogenics version 2. But as yet, I haven't actually got round to it because my copy is on CD. And yes, you guessed it, my Amiga 1200 no longer has a CD-ROM drive. So I'm restricted to using the older version, which which is limited to open images no bigger than the size of your actual memory. So that does limit it somewhat. So I've reduced the image sizes down to 1050 or 1050 pixels tall. Uh, this is a, a decent size for printing at 150 dpi, plenty enough for this, and um, we'll be able to work with these on the Amiga quite easily. Once I'd got the images over to the Amiga, what I wanted to do was convert them into basically four colour images which would be much easier for me to work on in Dulux Paint to clean up the details and so forth. For that I'm using a package called Photogenics which came out in the mid 90s which is a superb bit of image processing software and for many years this was my equivalent of using Photoshop. It doesn't have layers per se in this particular version but it's an extremely powerful tool and when you load in the images you've got all the possible options for conversion and back out to whatever format that you want. In my case as I say a four colour bitmap image is all that we need. The image editing that I wanted to achieve in Dulux Paint was to fix any drawing errors because, let's face it, there were a few because that damn pesky tripod was in the way and also because occasionally I do make mistakes like the best of us and also I wanted to add some shading in places. So with a couple of drawings I did break out my Copic black markers, shaded in, for example, Lamar and Yoga's hair, but on a couple of them, I actually left them completely uh, blank and unfilled in because, again, I just wanted to see what I could do. I also used a variety of divot fills just to sort of enhance the details, using perhaps sometimes the symmetry tools to basically get, for example, Yolga's uh, tunic looking good. And um, yeah, there's various tools in Dillard's Paint that make this kind of task pretty easy. The only difference is that it is a little bit time consuming because you are more or less working on a pixel by pixel basis. And because of the resolution, you know, like your mistakes are going to show up a little bit more clearly than say if you're working on a 600 DPI image. But overall, the process was not really all that much different than if I was actually cleaning up these images in Photoshop. The only difference I suppose would have been is that on my Mac I might have been able to use my graphics tablet just to patch in some of the lines and improve it. But overall, I was pretty impressed at actually how clear these images looked having originally been sourced to my phone. So once these have all cleaned up, I can then save these down onto the disk and then begins the process of actually putting the panel together. Now just to remind you, I've created basically a simple outline on just straightforward office paper, nothing fancy, that roughly shows how I'm expecting this little um, story art to pan out. Obviously I've not drawn the characters here properly, they're just meant to be illustrative so that I get an idea of how this could be pieced together. Now the trick is going to be seeing whether there is a piece of software that I own for the Amiga that will actually allow me to lay this out. And I use a piece of software called Draw Studio. Now this is a piece of software that I actually bought in the mid 90s for my Amiga. This is a brilliant structured art drawing program, but it also functions as a very basic desktop publishing package. Now there are better desktop publishing packages out there for the Amiga, but the one thing that Draw Studio does very well, even to this day, is exporting PostScript files. Now PostScript files you can think of as a predecessor to say PDF. Now the thing is, if I can export these from the Amiga with all the fonts and the bitmap images, as well as the structured art completely intact, there is nothing to stop me taking this file, putting it on a compact flashcard and loading that onto my modern day Macintosh and actually creating a printout from my modern day Canon printer. Yes, I'm sorry to disappoint you folks, I haven't bought a Canon BJ4200 or a similar inkjet printer to plug into my Amiga 1200 here. Yes, it might have been amusing to see whether, uh, how it would have turned out or whether it was any good, but actually, let's face it, it's just better that I let some things be done on the modern systems. 
Now, I'd be lying if I was to say that there weren't problems with this. For one, George Studio does in fact support transparency on bitmaps, which is brilliant because it means that when you're actually laying out your pages, or your panel in this case, you can actually see your structured art showing through the transparent colour of the bitmap. The only downside is that Postscript doesn't support transparency on this kind of object. So once you've exported your Postscript file or your encapsulated Postscript file, or EPS as it's sometimes known, Unfortunately, you're going to just have a plain background blocking out all of your artwork behind there. So this meant that actually placing these images on the page became a little bit more difficult. Now, it's quite often for manga panels to basically have all their frames um, nicely segmented in little boxes. And in fact, actually, um, there's nothing wrong with doing that whatsoever. However, you know me, I like to push things. And that's why I have Lyoga just standing on the right hand side of this uh, particular panel, the very first uh, frame that's going to be seen on this page. Because obviously remember that manga is read generally from right to left. And uh, so essentially what we're going to do is we're going to place the yoga here but we've got to somehow get the other objects to play nicely so that we see through them. Now it took quite a bit of tinkering with to do this but as you can see I've actually managed it. Another step was actually to create the kana, which is used to have basically sound effects in manga. Now sometimes these end up translated into English, so for example if you were to pick up the uh, Lama One Half manga from Viz, you'll see that basically they're all converted into English. However, if you pick up other manga, so for example Neon Genesis Evangelion, you'll see that the kana is all just in its natural katakana, so obviously you either have to be able to understand Japanese or be able to reference a little glossary at the back. I tend to do a bit of both. <laughs> I'm learning Japanese, but it's a very slow process but nonetheless I wanted to introduce some kana into this and rather than using English uh, letters I thought yes let's use katakana um, on the screen you'll see a link to a website which is really good at actually looking up what these symbols mean so katakana tends to be used for the uh, sound effects although sometimes you'll occasionally see the odd bit of hiragana in there as well this was ideal for using draw studios vector art tools for now it takes a little bit of time to do this but actually all of the structure Art drawing programs on Amiga, I would say that Draw Studio is easily the easiest to use. Now, for the speech bubbles, I wanted to keep this in English mostly because, as I say, I'm still very much at the beginning of learning Japanese, so this was something a little bit beyond me to actually write these in Japanese. And actually, I wanted the majority of people who are going to be probably watching this video to enjoy what I'm writing in here. But there's one thing that actually stops us from potentially actually using the kind of font that we want, and that is the fact that on the Amiga by default, you don't really get comic book fonts. So where are we going to source these from? Well, we can get them off the internet. Now, how do we convert these to a format that basically our package Draw Studio can use? Now, thankfully, Draw Studio does support PostScript Type 1 fonts. Now, if you were to Google Type 1 fonts, you'll find that they're not very common to find these days. They've almost universally been replaced with things like OTF or Open Type fonts. So what we need to use is another Amiga package, and now this was another stalwart back in the day, and a really good piece of professional software, and that's Typesmith. Now Typesmith is actually a full-blown outline font creator, so it's an extremely good piece of software. But the other thing that it does extremely well is the fact that you can convert fonts with it, and that includes true type fonts. Now this does mean that occasionally you have to use an online font converter to take your OTF files into standard TTF files, that's true type font files, but these are so easy to find on the internet all you do is get your font say it's an OTF format and then you upload it onto one of these websites that does a conversion and that will download your true type font your TTF font which you can take into TypeSmith on your Amiga and it's a very simple case from there to then export back out as an Adobe Type 1 Postscript font and then you can use this in Draw Studio so here for example I've got a nice comic book font in Draw Studio which will allow me to put in whatever I want into my speech bubbles with again I can actually create using the vector art tools in this package. So we're coming to the end of part one of this video. Let's see what our layout looks like. As you can see on the Amiga, it's looking pretty good. But then let's take this file and export it as an EPS file. I've put it onto a compact flash card and brought it over to onto the uh, Macintosh and I've loaded it up. And you can see we've got a few layout issues. So in part two, I'm going to show you how I solved these and the final creation. 
So I hope you've enjoyed today's video. It's been a lot of work to actually put this one together in many respects. Lots of problem solving. And of course, I'm just going to underline it again. In no way am I suggesting that your Amiga today is a viable solution for creating your manga panels. Get your PC or your Macintosh or your Linux machine or whatever it is that you're using these days. Use that to create your manga panels. It'll be so much easier. But on the other hand, don't you think it's kind of neat that this 26-year-old computer can still pack a punch where it counts? See you in part two. Take care. Peace. I would just like to mention that I'm now on Patreon, where you can support me from $5 a month, where you'll get early access to videos, artwork through the post, and also be able to support me in my creative endeavours. And I'd like to say a massive thank you to my Patreons, Just80, 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast, Phil Cobbley, Anthony Jarvis, Chris Forrester, and Rob Utley. Thank you so much for your support, guys. It really means the world to me.